All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Life Talks. This is episode 14. I have my guest today. His name is Matt McHuman and Matt Davis, and we grew up together. <laughs> the way I remember you was when we were growing up, I remember when we would go out for recess, and I, I will never forget running next to you, and we were just like, ah, just run. I will never forget you. Out. And also another thing, how you were, you would always read notes from your dad when you yes. eat your, when you open your, up your lunch. Those are two things I always remember as a kid. And, you know, in this time of like chaos and everybody else, social distancing, everybody stay away from everyone, stay, be afraid, like lockdown. Uh, I think it's an opportunity for all of us to come together and that we're all pieces to this big puzzle and that we all, um, we need to talk and share each other's views and like, Controversy isn't a bad thing. It's like it's dismissal of someone because they're Democrat or dismissal of someone because they're Republican. It's all ridiculous. I think there's truth in everything. And, you know, sometimes sometimes it's it, censorship can be OK, but it's also a dangerous path. But then the other side is also, um, you know, that instead of just uh, this vil, bu uh, bully victim mentality where it's like stand up for yourself, like encourage the the victor within you and also encourage exposure in yourself, like the victim, you know, like you have to, you don't always want to be this uh, nothing can ever hurt me thing, but you also don't want to be this everything hurts me thing. So yeah, figure. Uh, you become your reality. That's for sure. Yeah. Whatever story you tell yourself. I, I, I heard a quote recently. It was, um, uh, whatever you think you are is is true, or whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. That that yeah. one, yeah, it's it's so true. And uh, just before we were talking, you were saying that you wanted like uh, you were drumming and you're going to music as a passion of yours. Yeah, I mean, uh, for so long I've kind of ignored my creativity side of of music and just been like a big consumer. Um, uh, you know, like I I countless concerts i mean and and now it's not something i can and do as regularly i mean as as early as like seventh grade i, I used to start going to metal shows with my dad started going to Ozfest every year and that defined my summer you know concert festival thing turned into warp tour turned into camp bisco got into a lot of jam bands um followed those bands all over the place um and and now you can't really do that as much anymore and you know you have fly live streams that you could do and, and, and catch and, and that's cool. Or like, you know, socially distant shows, or I've been to a couple drive-in shows last summer, um, and last, uh, fall, but it's not the same. And, um, and my passion, you know, being hardcore and metal originally before jam music, you, there's no, definitely no mosh pits or, or stage dives anymore. And, and that was my therapy. So, um, I've had to like turn back to like, you know, what was my roots is my roots is like, I wanted to create that. That was my dream. I mean, our fifth grade yearbook, we had to like write what we wanted to be when we grow up. And, and most of everyone's, you know, was trying to be comical. And mine was to be the lead singer of a uh, typo negative, which is crazy because they had a lead singer, but um, uh, he actually since passed away. Not that I could be the singer of that band. It's easy replaceable Peter Steele, but um I should be exploring music and I, I've been trying to learn drums. I've gotten various percussion instruments uh, that I've accumulated through this whole pandemic. And uh, one was my roommate from college was a drummer. Now he's a guitarist in a band. Um, coincidentally, the singer of that band is a math teacher at Wayne Valley. Really? Um, crazy small world. Yeah. I it think, really is. Uh, I mean, we're all connected. Yeah. You know? my, my sister, I think had him or my brother, Anyway, um, he gave me his electronic drum set because he's not using it anymore. He's, you know, it was just in storage and I've been trying to learn drums and I, that's kind of what I used to play in our dorm room back at TCNJ. So um, I've been playing and, and, you know, just dabbling when I can and I've been doing it more and more recently um, since I got him in September. And man, I've, I, Things that I'm doing now, I tried to do back then. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm in over my head. There's no way yeah. I'm going to be able to drum. But I just stuck with it. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to end up being in a band or, you know, make music and put it out myself. Or maybe I, I, I make soap or, and, you know, sell it or whatever. But 
I have a lot of different passions. That's my main one, music, and I, I'd been ignoring it, you know, trying to live that corporate life, make a buck, and and yeah, and that's it's it's this paradigm of survival that we're in, where it's like, uh, you know, you have to, you're working for the paycheck, but it's not to discredit someone who's surprised, you know, supporting a family, or you know, we're all basically on the same path. We all want the same thing. I think universally, it's just expressed differently, and you know, the fact that you're talking about music, I mean, recently. Cause I've been trying to like, you know, navigate through like what's the corrupt music and what's like the real music, because it's like right. our culture has created such like, it just creates a beat. And then it's like words that don't mean anything and not to hate on, like, I don't want to hate on Eminem, but I, this example keeps coming to mind where that song is like, I love the way you lie. We're programming people to say, I love the way you lie. And I love a lot of his music. You know, I think he, yeah. he puts out his good original stuff. stuff was what I connected with the most, but yeah. yeah. And, and, that you know we have to kind of hold each other accountable like if things i say in my life i need to have feedback that i'm not always going to be right and you know like music like that it's like i've been listening now to like uh music in like the 70s and the 60s stuff that our like parents used to listen to and it's like it's so like i get goosebumps when i really start to tune into those vibrations because that's like what we're all about we're all vibes and mm -hmm. you know i think that's our main problem right now while we're so politically divided we're not tuned into our higher vibrations and when you get into that nobody can take that away from you like you can Absolutely. be i mean there's some of the greatest books that i've read it's like people in the most worst situations in the middle of war or like even in like concentration camps like like crazy stuff that like we we take our world for granted but these people who write these books in these crazy situations still can find that peace so it's not like while the world seems crazy right now i i see it as an opportunity that it actually can strengthen us we come together i want to have this con i've been reaching out to everybody around me you know like going on facebook reaching out to you and just like to try to inspire other people to follow their thing because I, I I can't tell you how many people i asked to make a podcast with because i was afraid of like you know saying the wrong thing or not being able to put it together right and i'm just like one day i'm going to screw it do it like when i'm riding a wave of just like feeling good like i'm going to share that with other people and as i've been doing that it's like it's awesome so that is good no then it's motivational definitely yeah and and yeah motivational what does motivational mean motivational means to have a motive and the problem is we don't really i haven't really dove down deep enough to know what my motive is i'm like when i was younger it was about all right about getting girls and you know having a nice right. ripped body and getting attention as i'm getting older it's like that's a nice piece of it i'm not gonna lie it's a, we all love attention but now i'm seeing it's more like no it's to really give value to other people and you always i've always heard it in my life right my parents always like raise us do the right thing and you know mm -hmm. be positive remember in i think it was middle school it was like make it a great day or not the choice is yours yeah. <laughs> every like, day Every day that was plated and, and it was just like, yeah, yeah. And I would still be rolling out of bed and hating to go to school. But, uh, you know, the truth is like, we, but we had to go through our own experiences to get to that point of realization. But Absolutely. yeah, music is we what it's all about. Like grow up. I, I think that like, um, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of ideas out there that, um, I think we're on the verge as a, as a humanity globally of, um, really waking up and becoming more interconnected. Like you said, like it's not to knock the person supporting their family or this or that. We're all on a hamster wheel. We're all in this collective delusion of like, you know, this American dream capitalism, you know, you, you know, like money's an illusion. None of it's real. Like, what are, what are we doing? We're like all creating this debt and suffering in the world for, for no reason. But, but like we're starting to kind of like wake up and realize that and then like everything kind of stopped, right? We all got locked down or, you know, there was, there was music festivals where tons of people from all different parts of the world would get together and, you know, congregate and talk about different ideas and have, you know, crazy psychedelic experiences and spiritual experiences that they never had back in their cities or their jobs or their worlds before. And, and then they share that and like learn new ideas and share new ideas. Now that's, there's, there's no idea spreading anymore. Yeah. The people that you're seeing, it's all in your circle because like no one's really comfortable going out of their circle right now, this pandemic and whatnot. And, and you gotta be respectful of people's, you know, beliefs about it all. And, but it's crazy. Like, yeah. And I think, you know, what I've noticed too, is it's a skill. See, 
That's why I, I don't believe in hate speech from a per, from a from a, um, a specific perspective. And what I mean is that when you say you have to respect other people's uh, views, I think it's and I think you would agree. It's like it's a half truth in, in the sense that we have to allow our ideas to we not to not be attached to our ideas. So in other words, like we have to have the ability to absolutely insult each other. See, like if I if I say, for example, I'm a Democrat or I'm a Republican. Mm -hmm. Instantly, I'm setting myself up that anybody who's not a Republican or a Democrat to just dismiss them. Right. And I think we need more people to say, Let, forget Republican, forget Democrat. There's absolutely there's corrupt politicians. There's corrupt. Like you don't just listen to a priest because he's a priest. You don't just listen to a scientist because he's a scientist. You listen to someone because they're the truth and the they're speaking truth. And the way you can realize that they're speaking truth, what makes a good teacher is the same thing that makes a good scientist, that makes a good priest, that makes a good monk, is that they get you to go within that you understand it. Now, a bad teacher, in my view, will tell you two plus two equals four, and they'll just repeat it and tell you to memorize it versus a good teacher says, okay, let me get some marbles and show you how these two marbles and this, and now you see count one, two, three, four, and they break it down in a way they right. get into the context of things rather than the content. So like, I'd, because we have, I'm sure you heard Mockingbird uh, media, like the, the, I think it was a, uh, a CIA program or something. It was Mockingbird. Project media, so, Mockingbird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that's, I believe it's declassified. It's nothing like, but that's what we're living in. We're basically living in the world yeah. half of mockingbirds who are just repeating what other people are doing, whether it's their parents or whether it's their, and we do it too. We reflect each other, you know. So like, yeah. if if if, I, if something is like, socially, go ahead. Yeah, no, I feel like when 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 you said it's like a half truth, it's it's absolutely right because it's it means that I'm respecting them because I I know I can't change someone else's like you can't change them. I, I'm not attached to my beliefs so fully because my opinions could change if I'm given new facts. My whole thing is I, I'm i not going to get upset about trying to change someone else's views on this pandemic, right, and force myself into their life. I, I respect it and, and, and uh, like, almost, like, swallow – swallow my pride and, and say, like, it just – I feel bad for them, you know? Like, I feel bad that they're – they're not living their life and not seeing their friends or family because of this. And, um, you know, you gotta be whatever safe and all that. Um, but you could lose someone tomorrow for a heart attack and, and then you didn't see him for the last year for what I asked my nunna who's, you know, old, I, I said, are you, are you scared? You know, you watch the news, like you're, you're older. So like this affects you but you're out here, you know, on Christmas or whatever and seeing the family. And she said, I'm not scared because like what's going to happen is going to happen. If I'm going to die, I'd rather have seen my family and then died versus, you know. Yeah, that makes me think of something I just came across because we were raised Christian, but, you know, the institutions have become hollowed out Catholic. Um, but it's it's uh, there's there's something I came across recently to to be a servant of Christ is to be obedient to death. And what I meant, what I come to see what that means is that when you aren't afraid to die, truly in the deepest sense, that makes the greatest soldier, that makes the greatest musician, like they can lose everything tomorrow. They're not, they're not held off by this belief of survival. I must survive. I have to protect myself. You're actually- love not fear. When yeah, you're love just, not fear. Correct. You're not, you're totally in a state of openness. You're expanded. I don't care. I will stand for what I believe is right. And I think, I think the, the way we express ourselves differently, the one thing that binds us together is vibration. It's, it's the universe. And I think you posted something like a Ted talk of this guy, I think a while back, uh, he talks about, what does he talk? He talks about, um, uh, something with patterns in nature no, like the fractal patterns yes. that you see throughout every level of nature. Yes. So like yeah. when you play a sound, you can actually, so I've seen videos like sand ends up being like, it forms that. So like when you're in that state of love and gratitude, even in really shitty situations, everyone's locked down. Imagine if people weren't afraid, but that's actually been indoctrinated to make us, if you're not afraid, there's something wrong with you because we're all yeah. in this victimhood mentality, which we yeah. all, I think, can relate to. Uh, be afraid because because then because then you're you're more easily controlled yeah you follow people afraid. who are confident rather than authentic which confidence is a natural byproduct byproduct of authenticity versus just following someone because they're confident 
Yeah, yeah. Um, my phone is about to die. I need to get a charger. I'll be right back. All right, yeah, that's cool. I'll, I'll stop it right here, and then I'll restart it up. Okay. All right, let's start it back up again. Um, I guess, you know, since you started talking off about music, I, let's dive into that more. I think um, maybe, like, what, what kind of music do you recommend people who – who um who follow that i mean tell me music that you like to listen to that you think would is really like it brings people together and like high vibrations kind of stuff yeah, that we're I talking mean, about so that's so that's uh interesting because i've i've actually reflected a little bit recently about that with myself cuz like you said you know you're listening to these lyrics you, it kind of program you a little bit and for that person it might be an outlet right they're writing these lyrics they actually feel that way in that moment but could also be destructive if you consume a lot of that too much so i've been trying to uh be more aware of that because in metal and hardcore there's some uh crazy lyrics out there um and some you know self-hating and and self-loathing lyrics and um you know they're good to get you through maybe those moments but not good to listen to all the time um i also listen to a lot of jam bands and you know jazzier stuff um that is more like it's not necessarily the lyrics that they're saying. Yeah, they're, they're lyrics you might connect with on a spiritual level sometimes or not. Um, some some hippie jam bands do have some, you know, hip, good lyrics in that sense, but some of them are meaningless and goofy. Um, it's the improv jamming in, in you know, the, the, the long segments of improv jamming that if you're if you're live, it's it's all it's all happening off the top of their head. So when you're, yeah, when that's you're there awesome. in the concert, everyone's experiencing that experience for the first time, right? You might have heard that song a thousand times. You might have heard it a month ago when you saw the band, you know, in another city, but they're playing it differently this time. They're playing it backwards or inverted. You know, they're playing just the ending and, and coming from a different song. And, and you really lose yourself in that. When you lose yourself, you find yourself, right? So yeah. So if that's happening in a collective sense at a, at a concert and maybe, you know, mix in some extracurriculars, you know, substances and, and, and you tend to lose yourself even more and you, you find that you're connected to all these other people in a sense bigger than yourself. Yeah. So that, that happens in the jam scene, but then in the, in the hardcore scene um, versus metal. And there's a tough distinction, right? Because it's, it's slight differences in metal versus hardcore one is more like punk based one is more like um i don't even know how to say it. both are, are are extreme forms of music i've recently listened to i i really appreciated um what is it uh uh what is it oh my god it's uh the it was say f you i won't do what you tell me what's who is that oh rage against the machine yes i've been yeah. listening to that like that song is so good. That's like he's against like the system. It's like the rage against the machine. Whereas you know, I think the real power is gonna come unite against the machine. You can't rage it because they want us to be like raging lunatics. But I love that song because it's like it it in the way of like you take a spectrum of the rainbow. Like a red is an aspect of us. A red is our primal sex war. Like you know, it's all about me. But that's an aspect of our humanity that right. uh, it's okay to hate. It's 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 another it's another thing to live there, and I think a lot right. of people may live there. I know I've lived there a lot of my life, and and as you mm -hmm. expect, they're all just different vibrations, and it's like to have that full expression. That's why I'm against hate speech because people have to express themselves if they're hating. It's one thing to you know call for a destruction of of people, but it's another thing to say you know I really hate that person because you have to ex express yourself. So because if, when you censor that, then you're you don't you can't allow yourself to say it the right way. Sometimes you got to say fuck you before you get to the point where you know I didn't mean that. You can't apologize. Like you have to you have to do the wrong thing in order to gain get to the right thing. <laughs> Cute. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I agree. And, and, and so for me, you know, I, you know, having a confusion growing up, right. And, and lashing out like we did, right. We ran out to bring it full circle. We, we were confined in our boxes and our desks and, and through this industrialized style education. And we knew we weren't supposed to be confounded like that. So as soon as we got our freedom, we could go outside and recess and yeah. be with nature. We express that like the true, you know, 
animals we're, we're animals we're beings of this, yeah. of this planet right so we express that so i had a lot of like lashing out against authority and and somewhat internalizing that because i knew that we weren't supposed to live this way i knew something was wrong so i turned to the the fringe areas of of music like metal and stuff where i could express that anger and i found that like in hardcore in these mosh pits in, in, in bonding over similar life experiences and maybe you're bonding over tragedy, you know, in your childhood, or maybe you're bonding over, you know, being oppressed by uh, an oppressive government, or maybe you're, you know, these lyrics, they're connecting you, you're aggr they're aggressive. It's allowing people to express themselves in a, in a productive way. You're making art, you know, like it's, it's music and these people that are going to the shows, yeah, you might get, being up a little bit but no one's out there trying to actually like beat the living crap out of someone and if that's happening it's broken up and it's so it's like a, this fight club with unspoken rules and and really what it is is it's a lot of people that would probably go to self-harm right and a lot of people that would hurt themselves otherwise and and then they're expressing themselves in a different way and realizing they're not alone because there's a whole room full of kids maybe at a vfw or maybe at a small venue that are screaming the same lyrics and feeling the same pain and emotions. And, and then they have the will to fight another day and give back to that community and feel a sense of belonging where they felt alienated and, and, and didn't have hope for their life. Right. So, yeah. so for me that, um, sorry, I was getting, oh, we're good. I can still um, hear you. Uh, for, for me, it's, it's allowed me to, you know, there's, to bring it back to the, the hippie music, there's a lot of like love, positivity, good vibes. And I couldn't ever connect to that from a place where I was coming originally because I needed someone who was broken to identify with. Because I didn't identify with that happy-go-lucky rainbows and, 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 you know, unicorns and everything is pretty um, until I realized that even, even the ugly is pretty. Um, and yes. And, uh, and you grow from the ugly, you know? Um, and so I appreciate both sides now more. Um, and when I listen to some hardcore music and I try and then incorporate a band that's gonna have more positive um, inspirational lyrics. Uh, there's a band called No Bragging Rights. They're about to put out another album. They have a lot of positive lyrics about, you know, finding hope and finding strength to push through those rough times. Um, to not repeat mistakes of your parents, uh, even if you were maybe abused, not, don't abuse others, you know, learn from those, uh, don't repeat those cycles. And then also, there's another band that's a little different, they're, um, you know, like, kind of like hardcore, post-hardcore with elements of electronic music, um, they're from England, called Enter Shikari, and they have a lot of good inspirational lyrics too about real life, but they also talk a lot of uh, political awareness stuff, you know, like, why are we doing this not sustainable system? Why are we keeping on with this delusion of craziness, chasing money and materialism and, and, and these things that don't bring happiness? We have so many testaments to that in, in Hollywood and mm -hmm. you know, people who become rich and famous and, and didn't have it before and now they're not happy. And I think that ties famous. into that type of music as well, where it's like, it's, you know, the, the red spectrum, right? It's like, it's our primal, like we are animals, right? Like we do, like, there's a selfishness at our core, right? Where it's linked with survival and all that. And there's also, I do believe in the spirit and the spirit is that of like, uh, giving yourself up for the whole, like, in the sense that, and not even from a pious way, right? Because I think I'm similar to you in the sense that it's like, you know, raised with Jesus, the hippie. And then as I've gotten older, it's like, well, there was also Jesus who flipped the tables, right? So, and that's, how, that's the real, like, that's, if we're, if we're real, like, we're not going to be pious and holier than that. And you had mentioned, like, uh, yeah. you're, you're around people who have gone through shit, like, like when you're suffering, you want to be the real, you want to be around someone who's experienced that suffering and overcome it. You don't want to be around the person who's like, oh, it's okay. Just be positive. And it's like, right. I, I've been, I've connected it with four levels of consciousness on the bottom is, and call it the full red is negative, um, ignorant, ignorant, negative. And that's like, you have no, you're completely delusional and you're completely negative. And I think that's the darkest part of humanity it's not even founded on any logic. And then the next level is ignorant positivity. 
and ignorant positivity is just you're you're dumb, but at least you kind of have this spark of faith. You're being positive, which is better than just being, you know, ignorant negative. And then then the point I think, at least for me, where I'm at and I'm shifting into the next level is ignore uh, conscious negativity. And this is like George Carlin. This is like what makes a good comedian because it's like it's a big club and you ain't in it. And it's like it's he's speaking to the political truths and like how like how our illusion and it's it's, it's like the level where your illusions are shattered right maybe the first right. dimension where it's just like you're naked you're completely like you, everything you th- all cops are good not true all cops are bad not true all like everything is completely interconnected and it can shake you up and i think the last level is conscious positivity and that's where the true spiritual comes in and which I, to me is the integration of the animal into ourself because when we if we reject the animal within us who's selfish and all that you actually become more selfish you say oh i'll do it my way it's that's when you recognize that's within everybody that's when you can actually relate to everyone depending on where they're at like if they're in that red hate zone you know and they're expressing themselves through like yo screw the system that's a part it's a piece of our truth and the also the other side is true it's the piece of that you know uh love and harmony and you know the beatles and like that kind of music you know Whereas both of them are true. Um, but it was just my two cents on that. I like that. No, I like that a lot. And, um, you know, growing up, we, we grew up with, with that similar connection in religion. You know, we were in like the, the same CCD classes growing up, you know? Yeah. In your house. Um, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, 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 it's, and that's, that's going way back. And um, I didn't identify with any of that those stories um because of i think a lot of the dogma and the institutionalization of religion i rejected the institutionalization of religion this one's right that one's wrong and a lot of that type of stuff um any t- any type of ideology or dogma that people subscribe to indefinitely to me is is you're creating more sepa- separation than than yeah, than benefit from identity politics. It's essentially yeah. attach yourself to identity. It does like, for example, for me, like people are gonna hate this. I voted for Trump. I believed in Trump, but it doesn't mean that I'm a Trump worshiper. And it's like the the end of the world. I, I think right. that there's so much more at play for me to understand, and I still have support without being a fanatic. Because it just because you're you voted for someone doesn't mean that you are now. Uh, your your ideology your ideolo- you're completely idealizing that person and i think right. there are some people who are like that but um i think we all have that tribal mentality whereas to me a real leader doesn't uh he doesn't he without going too political i think that he used influence like have you ever seen gladiator the movie gladiator uh yeah years ago yeah yeah well in that movie he basically talks about how like he hates the gladiator games and the idea of the Republic of Rome was, you know, it was like a free society. And it, but what, what it became is, is this idea of the, the bread and circus. Whereas right now it's like sports. I've never been into really sports following sports to me. It's so, it's so superficial and it's not to hate because I have a lot of friends who are sport sports fans and that's okay. You know, it's like, it's not a judgment, but that's how I view it. And, and, uh, you know, I, I have a thing where it's like, if you can get deep with me, I can talk about the, the weather and I can talk about sports. But if you don't have the capacity to have depth, then I can't have a conversation because it's like, it doesn't, you know, when shit hits the fan in rough times, I know you're not going to be there because you haven't really gone deep into yourself. Um, and I want to be around like-minded people. And it's, again, it's not to reject me, but, but back to the, the gladiator is that he ends up, he ends up becoming a gladiator in that movie. And he doesn't yeah. want to. He ends up, but he fights people and he's killing people. And what does he do? He gains the crowd. And at the end of the movie, it ends up, he, that was a tool in, that, in order to break the system. So right. that's how I, I've come to view Trump because Trump could have brought in the art. Like who knows what he, he could have done, but he didn't. So I don't look at him in a way, I look at him as a way of, as a catalyst. Right now, in my view, more than ever, I feel so many people are at least, at the very least, going, something ain't right here. And to me, that's like, that's awesome because this is an opportunity for us to come together. And the foundation of our country is we, the people. So, and, and I think for too long, we've sat on the sidelines, myself included, like I'm, it's, I'm the center of my reality. You're the center of your reality that we affect change in ways that we cannot even realize. And yeah. 
by saying, oh, well, there's nothing I can do. I'm not the president. I just not the that, that is never going to be the mentality that creates positive change. The best change, in, in my view, is saying, I did everything I could. And not from a pious standpoint. I think we need less hubris. But like more from a, how did I raise the vibration of myself around other people? What kind of music did I share? Who did I inspire? And if I look back at my life, I've been mostly selfish. You know, I may say that I say to quote on Facebook or wherever, but it's not integral. And I think that's where it starts. It starts from yourself, raising your vibration, keeping that positive mentality and influencing every single person you come into, uh, come, come into paths with. When I'm walking around now, I'm complimenting people. They're walking their dog. They had a cute dog. Little, little things. That has so much more inf- uh, impact cute. than because you create that ripple effect. Oh, someone said something nice to me today. Then they do it too. By us having this conversation right now, it's going to make your day better. It's going to make my day better. It's like, oh, somebody sees the world in a universal way that I do, and we're expressing yeah. it differently. So- yeah, no, and I think it's beautiful, too. And I, I was really happy that you reached out to me, too, because um, I, I have a lot of ideas to, to share, but, like, none of them are my own, right? Someone said, um, it's it's my interpretation. It's my, you know, sharing of it. And, and I've always been like, you know, all these ideas are out there. I don't need to necessarily share them. Who's going to listen to me, right? Like, and I don't want to be that person on a pedestal where everyone's listening to me. Correct. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't think of myself as that great of, of, uh, of a person to have people worship what I'm saying. But if it helps me and you, and even two other people out there, one Correct. other person out there with whatever they're going through, that, that, that's worth it. That's 100%. worth it. Yeah. That's and worth it, you know? There was a quote in the Bible, because I've been trying to, like, digest it and understand it from my internal center versus, like, just the dog about it. And mm-hmm. there, there was a, uh, there's, there's a quote, two things. One is, uh, don't trust in the heart. The heart can be wicked. And to me, the way I see that is, like, Hollywood just draws you into this illusion of, like, falling in love. This idea that love is associated with the fall, but actually, like you can get pulled into the drama of life if you're just rooted in emotion. And the other thing uh, is, is don't trust yourself. And, and I, I played with this idea because I couldn't understand it when I was younger. I'm like, don't trust yourself, trust in God. What does that even mean? Like, don't trust myself. So my view, and as I've come to understand it, I think it, w- from my perspective, what it means is that uh, it's don't trust your own narrow view. Like we are just like, we can't see the bigger picture. So when someone's Absolutely. like, like, so, like, again, regardless of who you voted for, if you're going to, if you think all the problems in the world come from one person, let me tell you something. It's not, it's all of us. It starts with me. It starts with you. It's literally how we come to perceive things. And if you were president, if I was president, who knows the variables that you have to deal with? Who knows who's lying, who's not? It's so, it's to the extent that we are not honest, we're going to have a not honest, uh, we're not going to have not honest politicians. And I think our culture is an example of that. It's very fake. It's reality TV, which isn't even real. It's like, yeah. it's just, it's a dying culture. And I think, you know, we're going through a process of rebirth right now and it's going to be beautiful. Absolutely. And it's, it's On a every test. Level. Yeah, hundred percent, man. I mean, I mean, you and this is why it's crazy, you know. Like these ancient civilizations point to these times too, um, you know. And and people were all focused on the 2012 thing. It's a it's a range from 2012 to the Great Conjugation that just happened. It was a transition from Pisces to Aquarius. We're headed yeah. towards Aquarius. We're not fully in Aquarius yet. There's there's aspects of Pisces that are still on the planet. We're still shifting, right? But but we're realizing our true nature. Like you said, it's all vibration. For me, I was very science focused and abandoned religion because science told me the truth and religion Mm. to me wasn't telling me the truth. And it pointed me back to spiritual spirituality. When I got to college, started studying, I was, I was a math major and I, on my own, I would like study quantum physics, shrink theory, quantum physics, man, that's it. Philosophies. And, and it, I mean, the implication of all that is we're all vibration, we're we're all energy. When you said sound, and I read a book um, called The God Theory, like, or, yeah, he said, let there be light. The first there was the word, the word ohm, it's a sound, it's a, it's a primordial vibration. Yeah, it's vibration. Vibration, and it creates form through the vibration, it creates form. 
we're all literally in his image. We're in the universe. The universe is the almighty. And language we're, is so limited. We're within it's it. so limited because to articulate yeah. it is like, how do you explain consciousness? Christ said, people will look for a sign, but no sign will be given to them. A wi- he says, a wicked and deceitful generation will look for a sign, but no sign will be given to them. And I'm like, it's because people are looking for a sign out there, but it's not Externally. out there. It's totally- the body's the temple it's it's it it's not it's not going to come from priests it's not going to come from scientists it's going to come from you it's your interpretation of how you see the world and i think we're in a process of death and rebirth right now and that's yeah. we're going through we're going through childbirth right now and it's going to get crazy and who knows what's going to happen and thank god if we had life all figured out like imagine being born and you have a resume of everything you're going to go through there'd be no joy in that so yeah. this is a chaotic yeah. time but in chaos comes exciting. Yeah, it's it's a deeper. We get to a deeper truth. We just can't give in to fear. That's the thing. It's because, you know, you're not crazy. I'm not crazy. There's there's we have a you said you said a couple times in this conversation. Consumer. It's very true. We are a consumer culture, and consuming is not bad. But if that's if everyone's a consumer, we're just mindless zombies. What would be the opposite of a mindless zombie? A mind uh, a mindful producer. You're, you're, right. You're just create. 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 Here's the, I made a joke recently, and it was so funny. I had, I had my friends cracking up. I said, what they're doing in China is they're, they're creating anything plastic, and they're saying, fucking someone in America is going to buy it. Just make a plastic thing. Someone's going to buy it. They make anything. Literally, there's the stupidest things, and, and people buy it. But what we need to do is create content, create art, create music, create... Uh, yes conversations ideas ideas like ideas. inspiration your ideas come from within they're not yes. going to come or, or, or we're consuming um uh, knowledge and knowledge isn't mm-hmm. bad it's like it's not that you should not go to school and whatever but if you think school is the town ta- like i had a i had an epiphany the other day it's like when you when you put on a graduation cap you're a blockhead you're, like that. you're closed in and it, again yeah. it's, it's not a not like i've been to college it's it's not a knock on college you can it, it depends on how you perceive it if you perceive it as the all-knowing you know mm-hmm. i read this this is in the book you're wrong i mean that's now right. you're just but if you enter college and like i'm gonna learn but i'm not gonna be this this is just a, a process it's not the all end all then it, it can be a beautiful thing yeah if you use college as like a to open your mind and learn how to think for yourself versus be be force fed information and regurgitate it. If you use college for that and and open your eyes and your worldview, then it then it could be beneficial because you realize that learning doesn't stop when you graduate. It's your learning is is a whole life's process because what we knew at one point in our history, we realized we were really fucking wrong. And, the, and, you know, the earth isn't the center of the universe and, you know, whatever. And, and we fast forward and, and we, we reteach ourselves and we relearn who we are. Um, and I think that's what we're going through right now. We're, we're relearning our true nature that we yeah. forgot. And we I also, forgot, I also we think- forgot when we ate the fruit, when we, yes. when we ate the forbidden fruit, the mushroom, we forgot our connection so you see it as a mushroom? The stone date theory. Yeah, Terrence McKenna. It, it's what I, I created our evolution. We started having uh, from from humans, from ape, um, kind of like evolved with fungus. We, we left where we were. We had, were forced to eat these fungi. We had psychedelic experience. It created wall art and language. Language created identity and self... Um, it created humanity when we realized uh, uh, our own nature, you yes. know, and realized our self-existence and our dilemma that we'll die and all of that. Um, you know, it was, we were so in the moment before then, like all other animals just living in the moment in the garden of Eden. Yeah, like and, and, and we let, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, sleep. And, and even in nature, you know, there might be chaos, but chaos is small and fleeting amongst the, the, you know, rest of it where there's more cooperation in nature than competition. Uh, yes. by, uh, by all means, by all species, there's integration and cooperation way more than competition. Um, and and uh, I, I, I kind of got off track there, but... No, uh, I, I agree. And I, I think cooperation is going to come from us as a collective. It's not going to come from up there. See, my view is the politicians are promising everything right now. I, 
and I, I consider myself as each day goes on, a Republican and a Democrat, like the ideas of both are true. Like you're gonna have people who are greedy, who really cling to money and they lie. And you're gonna have people who have a lot of money who provide jobs to other people who, who are actually really busting their ass. And just because they make more money doesn't mean they're necessarily bad. It's money is a tool. If we worship the tool, it becomes a problem. And then the same can be said on the other side, the Democratic money side. Does. You yeah. can say, there's people who are poor who could be busting their ass and doing more myself included i was you know doing you know oh i'm all preachy and hippie but what am i doing i'm not really busting my ass and and not it doesn't have to be i, I don't i agree with you at the beginning you said the slave system that's not i do believe in hard work the ethics of hard work but if the ethics of hard work are just to perpetuate the same old world it's dead so and then you also have people who are poor who need help they actually they really need help and and i do believe in social programs have their place but there's truth on both sides and we, and it's two sides of the same bird. And we need to get out of this type of thinking that it's like a, a Democrat Republican is absolutely ridiculous and they're both right in their own regard. Right. Yeah. So, I think, I think the, the two party system is, is um, creating more division than solving problems. And uh, I, we just, we need, we need more of a di direct democracy. I think at this point, you know, we're, we're voting for representatives to represent our voice um, and we've are going based on that system based on when they sent messages by fucking horse and carriage. Yes. And now I'm talking to you and you're in a different state and I'm in Philadelphia and, and, you know, we're able to see each other and yeah, we crazy. need direct democracy, any policy. Well, everyone can vote on every policy. We don't I'm need glad you said that because I actually partially disagree with you. And, and here's why. Okay. Direct our, and, and you'll hear me out. And this is the whole problem. We have to disagree with each other so oh, we yeah. can understand that we're all looking for the same thing. And, and hear me out. So direct democracy would mean that the majority rules the way that's how I see it. That if the majority of people believe something, and to me, it's it's a half truth. So if yeah, the if, if the majority believe that we should all beat up each other, that would be pure democracy. And the idea of you know, I, the idea of a republic is that we 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 um well, constitutional republic that the re we elect people to represent the ideas that our foundation is built on. And I think both are true in the sense that collectively there's, and this is, this is where it gets into the vibration. So we need to focus less on left, right, and get into the vibration and it will naturally, and I think it ties into masculine and feminine too. I think the yeah. left is really, it's the idea of the feminine and the right is the idea of the masculine. And I think we've lost touch with God. And to me, God is the, the idea of the father. And I think speaking on experience, I, I haven't been a man and not a man in a machismo way, but in a man that, in a, in a way that we live in a very, in my view, a very feminized world and that it's all about comfort. It's about security. It's the matriarchy. Whereas the truth in my view is that it's not the matriarchy that's, that's going to win or the patriarchy. It's the interconnection of the masculine and the feminine, the yin and the yang, and recognizing that there's a feminine part in masculinity and there's a masculine in, 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 in binding that together and coming to see that we're different and that's okay, but up is down, down is up. And a, a real man embraces the beauty of a woman and a real woman embraces the beauty. Like, and that is, and, and I think we need strong men. I think we need men, we need less fuck boys. We need less like just YOLO mentality. I think structure is a good thing. I also think emotion is a good thing. It's like, we have to come together in that sense. And I think it, when we do, the left and the right are actually at its purest form, but because we have fake men and fake women, right? In the sense that you have like the walk away movement and then you have the, what was the other movement? Um, the walk away and the Me Too movement. These are these ideas of the fake masculine, the fake, uh, fake uh, feminine. You know, you hear toxic masculinity. You don't hear toxic femininity. There's very manipulative women out there. There's also men who are manipulative as well. And, and we have to get back into that because to me, that's the truth. It's not men versus women. It's not left versus right. It's us coming together. It's uniting and getting back to Adam and Eve, our purest form of masculine and our purest form of feminine. And masculine... Masculine is a form of defiance. It's saying no. And I, to, in my life, women love that. Women love a man who has his own ideas, who says, screw you, I'm standing my ground. But as long as it's not coming from an insecurity where it's like, oh, you're making, because I think a real man can also be able to expose himself. He can say, you know what? I've, I've been a piece of shit. It, it's it allowed to be humble, but at the same time, yeah. not living in that victimhood. You know, the father and the mother are both necessary. So-
just with yeah no, I, I agree with that i think i think that like um ignoring one side or favoring one side for the other in any situation is is inherently you're ignoring your true nature like the, the yin and the yang they're both part of this the bigger whole and we're we're all part of this bigger whole this interconnectivity um you know, like, like we're all energy. So if we're, if we're fearful of the other side or ignoring the other side, uh, then that's wrong. So in, 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 in a sense, like you're, you're absolutely right. Like the majority shouldn't ever rule if they want to beat each other up. Right. So direct a democracy on, on like those type of things would, wouldn't make sense. Yeah. But, but that needs to come mostly from an education standpoint of, uh, we are the same. We're all like, you know, yes. we're individuals, but we're the same. So we're, we have our individualism, but we're interconnected and dependent on everyone else and doing harm to each other or the, the environment is doing harm to yourself inevitably. Yeah. Um, but, but the only reason you, why you would do harm to either of those things is that, is that a fear mm -hmm. for not enough for yourself. Correct. Uh, and and this this scarcity model, um, yeah, it's such BS, crazy. man. It's such BS. Look at everything regenerates. Look at the trees; they regenerate. With this idea of scarcity is absolute BS. It's absolute BS. I mean, it's it, what some, there's. There, that's why we have to tune back into frequency. It's about high vibrations. Then we're able to see each other, and then we're, we're universally tapped into that. We're naturally different. See, there's a, there's yeah. a universal language that we've forgotten that you are yeah. my brother, you are my sister, like that, like when we're two, and as we feed that, we actually start to live there. It's a, the kingdom of heaven is here now. It's how we come yeah. to see the world and it's, it's all mm -hmm. about vibration, but left you, can, life, you make your own heaven or hell. Yes. In this life. Man. Yes. In this life. And I think, I think we're all somehow like when you die, it's like based on your your way you see the world, you go back in. Like, I think it's all perfect. I really think the world we live in is absolutely perfect from a higher self. But when yeah. I'm in my lower self, it's like it seems divided. It seems events are separate. It seems that it's the world is divided so much as you were divided is really a true thing. And it's like I've seen that so much on Facebook quotes, but it's really a true thing. It's it's and another it's really thing to get rid of your that's real repentance to me it's getting rid of your own ignorance that's all it is you get rid of your own ignorance you see things as they are versus how you've come to project them through hollywood through you know low vibrational music through the people who are around you who haven't lived their own dreams who haven't trusted their own internal views and we're all doing it to each other right now every single day in all of our interactions yeah yeah i think um I think we're on the right track. I think, you know, humanity's waking up. I think that this this shutdown, as much as it's slowed the share of information, it's kind of forced depression upon all of us because we've been forced to go within. And depression is your body's natural mechanism forcing you to go within. Hey, there's something wrong. You need to change and, and most people then don't change. They succumb to it all and sit there in that depressed state. But it's, it's, it's guilty, what, professional guilt. Oh, same. Sure. Yeah, dude. Absolutely. I've, I've struggled with it my entire life. Um, but, but like, you know, you, you, we real we got to realize, you know, like we, we, we need to change. Um, and I think that right now, like we're all forced to go within, like I said, is this forced depression. Um, it's humanity's natural mechanism to kind of help ourselves grow and realize that we need to collectively change. Um, what that direction is, is going to be decided, I think, by, you know, whether we choose love or fear. Like yes, you said. Yes, it's really, it's so simple because everyone's like, well, what do you do? Well, that's what got us. It's doing. We're human beings, right? Like you, mm -hmm. your, your name is Matt McHuman. You're, we're yeah. human beings. Being and doing are two different things. When you are in a state of love, you actually automatically do what's necessary. But the thing is, the mind doesn't, it, it can't comprehend that. It's like, okay, that sounds nice, but what do I do? 
It's not yes. a do, it's a be. And yeah. you, you, the point that you just made is it's, I, I heard recently it was, uh, we all just got sent to our rooms to think about what we've been doing. <laughs> and it's like, I like that analogy because it's like, Very you know, true. when you're a kid, you're sent to your room and it's like, either you raged and threw everything at, you know, all over the place, or you, you had those moments where you're like, all right, got to drop the ego here. And it's, it's, that's where we're at right now. And I think we're waking up to that. And I think media and all that, they're going to be pushing out a lot more fear. I, it's my gut. That's what they do. They make money on it. Correct. And it's going to get so crazy that people are just going to see through it. So I'm actually excited for it now. It's like, bring on the fear, whatever yeah. it is. And, and, I'm, I'm Rog going Rogan to... said that at one point years ago, I think he was yeah. like, we're, we're entering a, a collective phase of like, like absolute disgust. We're going, pushing it as far as it could go. Materialism and all this garbage consumerism so that we could be like, fuck, that's disgusting. Like, you know, like, like, like after a bad hangover and you're like, I'm not drinking for fucking ever, you know, like we're going to leave this party behind and, and hopefully, you know, create a better world and and like you said earlier you know like uh, what was it in in the bible you said that like you're your own worst enemy almost like you're you can't trust yourself yes yes you, you that, can don't convince trust yourself your, yes. your mind could convince yourself of anything yes. and you'll believe it anything but that's that's you that's abandoning faith yes if you're you're convinced you gotta you gotta be and not try and do so that you can have more faith and and live in in a love state of being like like nature like like before we ate the mushrooms like before we learned how to speak and constantly have this dialogue and this story and chatter in our mind when we're not talking we're thinking we need to just be and, and come from we have a mind in our heart we have a mind in our gut Got, and yeah. we have a mind here and if we interconnect all of them and not just follow your heart and not just follow your mind but interconnect all of them that's why we'll we be this father son holy spirit when that when they're connected then that's when we flow but if we're thinking too much or feeling too much we're not in that flow state and i, I actually had an epiphany that influence inner fluidity it's like whoa when you have inner fluidity you gain attention and yeah. because you're actually gaining attention from people who want that they and want that have, flow state yeah. Correct. And if you give that away to people versus using it as a tool to get attention, like I'm trying to gain an influence uh, through this channel so I can help other people. And as influence starts to grow, it's like that ego, the higher the level, the higher the devil. So it's like, as yeah. that starts to come up, I'm, you know, and, and that's why I have compassion. I used to be like judgmental, of like Justin Bieber. I'm like this little kid, he's all this, you know, he's, dude, if I was 17, 18 and I had his kind of money, Jesus, I would... Who knows what I would have done, man? And it's like, we're all connected. Prince and the pauper, we're all connected. We need to stop this separate separation thing. And I think, you know, this conversation is a, an example of being. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and I think that's why uh, podcasts are interesting too, because it allows for a flow state of ideas to flow through and almost like from the universe through us, we end up being these channels for the universe to speak to itself. Yeah, right because we, we, we are the universe experiencing itself third party you know we're, we're like you know let's forget it's it's almost like we're god we took a drug let's forget who we are and have a collective dream for a little bit and then yeah. when we die we're back into the universe we're back into nature and we're back into like oh shit that was crazy i am everything that that was nuts you know and we forget but if we realize that we are everything while we're still here yeah we could do a lot more good. Yeah. Truth is paradoxical because if one person says, I am the truth, like Christ said to, I believe it was Abraham, uh, he says, before Abraham was, I am. It's that I am principle of mm -hmm. that it's, but the ego also says I. So it's, it's that internal wisdom that knows who's full of shit and who isn't. And that's based on our moral compass that we get rid of our own shit, we, we can see clearly who the liar is. But it, so long as we lie to ourselves every day, and it doesn't have to be lying maliciously, it can be lying that, like you say, like people who go to a dead corporate job and they're just doing it soul sucking where it's just about a quota. It's not about, it, or there's the illusion that people care about you. It's, it's, but they really just care about your money. If you made low money, like, but it's, it's dynamic too, because it's also like, you know, there's, uh, 
there's nothing better than a story of someone who rises to the top too. So it's like, it's so, you can't judge. That's going back right. to that original point. It's like, it's not me to judge someone who's in corporate America, but like, if, if that's truly their passion, if they really love doing what they do, you know, I think, I do believe in some businessmen who are actually really integral and what they're doing is they're really helping other people. And that's what, that was their calling. But I would argue that a lot of people who are in jobs in a, in an office, they don't want to be there. Right. Uh, that, there is a different way. If you believe it, it's like, blessed is he who believes, does not see. Everyone's looking for a sign, but there's not going to be a sign. I put this podcast together, for example, that I didn't know what I was going to talk about. I tried to get, like I said, so many people and it never, it was just, all right, just do it. Like I, I look at, like I have, you know, my bed and like my girl's dresser here with the jewel, like this is not a set, but it's like, I, I don't care. If people are going to look at this video and see content, I don't want to, I don't want people who just looking for, I want people who are actually trying to grow. So my audience is going to not focus on this. They're going to, they're going to focus on the process. They're going to focus on the context of our conversations and, mm -hmm. you know, so it's just about doing it. And same thing with you, man. I mean, music, just do it. Like you, you have it. Like, you know, you've always followed, I, you're, you've, I, I've seen so many posts from you, like music. It's like disco biscuits I've ever seen over, over the years. And, you know, yeah, like, I've seen them almost 80 times. Yeah. So I got to check them and out. And that's I nothing. That's nothing. There's people that have seen them that I know like over 200 times. Yeah. It's insane. Uh, and I got some music for you too to check out. Um, yeah. And for everybody's listening, check out Akira. There's, there's this guy, what he does is he takes lectures of like very influential people. I think he has Terrence McKenna and Alan Watts too. Oh, and he basically awesome. makes music out of it. And it's really inspirational that like I've cut out like all the mainstream, like rap and rock and and I, I've been listening to that a lot. It's really like, check it out, Akira, A-K-I-R-A. I like that. RA. Yeah, it's awesome. And I'll check out Disco Biscuits and... Any 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 others that you recommend? Um, if you if you like that type of stuff, I'm um, open to would, anything that's a high vibe. So rock, anything, as long as it's. I, I don't know if you. The disco biscuits are very 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 niche. They're like um, they're hard to get into for most people. But try it. Uh, I don't know if that'll necessarily click. It it took like seeing them live a ton of times for me to for it to click. But anyway, Papadocio. Papadocio has some great music and lyrics. Definitely high vibes. Definitely high vibes. Um, and Spangle. Spangle, um, I've seen a bunch. That kind of transitioned me away from a lot of the hard music and towards a lot of the uplifting music. Um, they're like world music meets electronic music. So you'll get like influences from like all this ethnic music from around the world, but mixed with like trance house music or like dub music not dubstep it's not that intense yeah but like dub music and they'll sample like a terence mckenna they'll sample yeah, like i've seen I've heard other, a lot of songs there yeah so good and and you know it's those those are two that are, are pretty high vibes um if the, if there's a hardcore band it be maybe stick to your guns is up there Stick to Your Guns is a really good band with a good message all the time. Any any uh, artists that you recommend that are similar to Rage Against the Machine? Probably Stick to Your Guns. Stick to your guns. They're heavier. They're heavier in their sound, but like lyrically, um, they're similar because they're they talk a lot like uh, of like you know of a political message, um, but then they also reflect a lot on a spiritual message. Like they have a song you said earlier in this podcast. It starts with me. They have a song called It Starts With Me. Um, start with their album, maybe Diamond. Diamond. Just Yeah, Diamond. The first song of Diamond is the song Diamond. Um, and it has a quote from, uh, from like, I, I don't know if it's a monk, like a, like a, like a swami, like a swami, I guess. You yeah. know, like a, a spiritual teacher yeah, from like, yeah, yeah. India or something. It's like it's like one of those guys, and uh, and and he's in the quote. He's like, um, "You have you have to believe about you have to believe in the light in yourself, not in the light of a professor or a, or the Buddha or someone else. You have to believe in the light of yourself um, in a world that's in, in, impossibly becoming dark." Mm. And, and that's the truth. Is like it's not about whoever's listening to this following us and our message. 
or following, you know, some Hollywood message or the American dream of get rich and you'll have a big house and a happy life. And it's not about following that. Follow your own message. Follow your own inside message, your own light, your own passion, because it's different from every, for mm -hmm. everyone. For me, it's music, and that helps me get through tough times. For someone else, it might be painting. For someone else, it might be acting. For someone else, it might be, you know, studying the environment from a from a statistical standpoint and you know the weather patterns or whatever it may be you know like connect with nutrition connect with you know your body um find what works for you and run with that and don't chase someone else's dream absolutely absolutely i'm learning that more and more that you know i've i've not spoken out and in not speaking out and expressing myself um become very cynical and it's like, oh, they're all idiots. They're idiots. Whereas it, uh, there's someone I follow, Muji, where he says uh, he was actually brought up about the New World Order. And this woman was like, I'm very afraid. I don't know what to do. These people are crazy. And he said the greatest response. He said, he's like, you better wake up quick then, huh? And he said, they're crazy because we're stupid. We're one big team. And I was like, yo, that's so good. Because these people who are high up, they, they look at us like st we're stupid. And for the most part, we've been pretty stupid. So we give them their power and their money. Correct. Amazon so, has all our money. So to, <laughs> to, yeah, for sure. And it's it's not. It, that's why I like I like the message of Rage Against the Machine. But the time has come to unite against the machine. It's time yeah. to. It's not about fighting. It's about. It's there's different forms of fighting, and you fight by being your own essence, and tuning into that high vibe, and. Uh, yeah. Just to finish off, is there anything else you wanted to leave off with? Um, watch Inter Reflections. Inter Reflections. It's, actually, if I could give you three documentaries to yeah, watch I'm that came course. out this year, and they're all kind of sequels to documentaries of and previous works of people that have inspired me a lot um, and my view of the world. Um, Inter Reflections is probably the most recent one. It's on Prime. I think it might be free now. Um, it's on YouTube. You can rent it. Um, that one is a Peter Joseph film. And it's kind of like a cynical documentary on the present time. They call it the Great Transition. Uh, but done from two periods in the future. Like um, a bunch of years towards the end of the transition. Uh, when we're like at the, the verge of brink. And then in the future when we've reached like a better society and like reflections on 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 back then so it's called inter reflections um and then thrive Two. thrive Two uh is a sequel to thrive but done much better it incorporates um free energy technology uh our our true essence from a spiritual perspective that we're all interconnected on an energy level um a lot about you know the the way the world works on a on a corporatocracy level, um, banking systems and whatnot, and how to you know stop environmental collapse and and different types of stuff like that. Um, free energy technology is probably the big one there, and then um, CE five Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind is really interesting. It's a Stephen Greer film. It's the third one he's put out, um, and that one uh, it's it's about our spiritual nature and connection to the cosmos um, and our connection to extra dimensional beings that have been absolutely visiting this planet. There's so much proof um, the the government has come out and, and talked about it more recently and is continuing to disclose more and more. Um, hopefully they don't go the fear narrative way and say, we need to fear these extra dimensional beings and start war with them because, right, that's not, we wouldn't win that I, war. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think that was the, I, in my gut, is the reflection of uh, demons and angels. I do believe that there's, in an infinite universe, you're going to have all, you're going to have good beings, and you're going to have bad beings. And to the extent that you're truly good, not good, again, that's good, bad duality, but to the extent that you're tuned in with that higher frequency, you'll you'll know how to navigate. You'll know who is good and who is bad in the sense that you're not operating from a judgment. You're operating from an energy. When you're high energy, you'll attract people who are high energy. And aliens, you'll attract high energy. You'll, you'll, you're on the right path when you're in the right vibration. And that's how they, they go out in CE5, their, their protocol. They go out into like these deserts and they meditate and they call these 
and 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 have success rate like of literally almost 100 percent. they get these being you know not beings to land but like beings to fly over and it's documented um but they've also talked to a bunch of ex-military people that have talked about how these beings have shut down their their nuclear systems and their nuclear research and their they've prevented i think nuclear war i think they've prevented our own demise i think that they've been more present here since we dropped those bombs i think we don't realize how that actually affects the universe necessarily i think they were like oh let's go there and make sure these people don't fuck up everything worse than they know what's going on and they're kind of making sure and observing but like you know they're definitely more you know progressed than us and spiritual in that sense um and hoping and probably hopefully guiding uh us to continue to awaken um I think we have a lot of the technologies that we need to kind of free us from these grips of poverty. Um, we just need to embrace them. So those those are the three that I think. So are in, uh, into reflections, thrive two, and CE five, right? Yeah, yeah, right, and cool. probably in that order. Into reflections is the is is the coolest one because it's it's very just interesting, you know, to see what what potentially could be our future if yeah. we. We're all writing the script. That's it. Like, and yeah. yeah. So send are. out the good vibes. I appreciate you coming on and I hope to have you again. Uh, I'll Absolutely. definitely check those out um, and go build something, man. And the next time you come on and, you know, we can talk about some, what you've built and uh, yeah. I'm all Absolutely. for it, brother. No, this was very inspiring. Um, share, share all this with me and share me, share with me the, uh, the links to the other ones. I want to, I, I, I will do brother. Appreciate I want to hear Funa too. I'm excited. Yeah, dude. I, I hope to speak with him tonight and I'll uh I'll definitely put that out too tonight. God bless you, dude. Thank Bye, you. Man. You too. Bye-bye.